All right. What up? Welcome to the Discourse Podcast, content for the culture. I'm Nico, and I am joined here today with the homie, Brian. The wet carrot. The wet carrot. And uh, we're just going to sit, talk about Brian, learn about his days, his life. Yeah. All right. So how you doing tonight, man? What's, Dude, what's good? I'm doing good. Like, I just got off work. I work at Starbucks, super chilling. Uh, kind of sweaty, as always, you know. A lot, of, a lot of people see me as like the sweaty dude, like, oh, yeah, he's if he's sweaty, he's having a good time, man. It's like, a sweaty life. It's a sweaty life, exactly. And uh, yeah, today I just went to school, got off, went to work, took a nap in between, it's super chill. I mean, that was, that was my day today. Nice. Super chilling. So, like, what's your nationality? Uh, so, I'm Mexican-American, you know, both my parents were from TJ, uh, born and raised in TJ, and they moved over here. Hella, I hella respect them for, like, what they've gone through to, like, come over here. Like, especially my mom, like, she told me, like, yeah, she lived in TJ, but she would work in in San Diego. She would work at, uh, like, a Taco Bell, and oh, yeah. she was, like, a secretary in San Ysidro. She just grind. Yeah, she and she was, like, barely, like, 20, 21, doing all this shit. And I'm like, whoa, what the heck? Like, I'm 21 right now, and I'm just, like, I'm chilling. Like, I'm, like, way too chill then versus, like, what my parents went through. And I'm, like, super blessed. I'm super... For sure, dude. Respect, like, their grind. It's that millennial grind that we're on. <laughs> it, it's, yeah, I know. It's not a... I mean, we definitely have a lot of uh, a lot of things handed to us, for sure. I think yeah. so. And, and that's because... Just because our parents, like, hella grinded for us. And I feel like we have to, like, respect that in a way. And respect your parents. Respect your parents, y'all. Like, give them a little bit of love. Give them a, give them a little kiss on the cheek. You know, give them mm-hmm. a hug. You all... <laughs> <More hugs. laughs> yeah. A little hug, dude. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. There you go. So, uh, what, what was like your what was your high school life? Oh, uh, dude, was... high school, man. It's I went to this like small ass charter school, like no other high school. Like I felt like talking about my high school versus anyone who went to like a regular high school. And I say this because like my high school, like all like all the whole school was like six hundred kids, right? Mm-hmm. Each grade was like a hundred twenty, a hundred fifty kids. And that's so small compared to, like, every other high high yeah. school. And, like, 600 could be, like, a graduating class. For sure. And to me, that's, like, what? Really? Mm-hmm. Like, it's just so weird. Like, my mind and the way I experienced high school was just so, like, sheltered in a way. And I didn't experience, like, all the other high schools. Like, we never really had football games. Like, for me, I played rugby. It was, like, a little club. That's kind sick. of. Yeah, it was super sick. I loved it. But it wasn't, we weren't really with, like... I don't know. It was just really different versus, like, other high schools. They have, like, their football games. We didn't even have football. Oh, wow. Because we were, like, we're super small charter yeah. school. And we had, like, rugby. It wasn't that big. You know, mm-hmm. I joined it because uh, that was pretty cool. And I, I was super into football. So, yeah, I just joined it. I did, like, a like a year of fencing, which was super interesting. Yeah. Damn. It was, like, such a weird and interesting experience. That it's sounds like, crazy. No, I, yeah. I've definitely always felt like, I've been down for fencing. Dude, yeah. It's super interesting. There's, like, like a point system to it and stuff, right? Like, dude, it's so insane. Like, there's this one move I'd, like, only knew. Like, you would have to, like, flick your wrist in a way. Because, like, like, there's kind of, like, a cheat code in a way. Like, you can have your, like... So what the point of the game was, like, you have to get your... The, the, the point of your sword to, like, touch, like, either the torso or the back. And so what I would do, I would, like, flick my wrist and the, the sword would bend. And it would touch their back. Oh. And then that was like kind of like my trick, and that's all I really knew. I mean, I just started, and everybody else like I we went versus like modern day uh, cathedral, and they were all beasts already. They have been growing up doing fencing. And our school, we barely started like the program, mm-hmm. and we were all super like shitty and ass. <laughs> and, like I only had this yeah. one move, like all I knew. But it was super cool. I, I really liked the experience for sure. People that know you mm-hmm. know who you are. Right. You're just a. Uh, you're a San Diego based. Yeah. EDM. Yeah. DJ. Yes, sir. The wet carrot. The wet carrot, dude. Now, Just... you've like you've gone through these schools. Like you, it, it, has music always been like a part of you? Have, were you ever in like band or anything like that? Where you just like, when when did music like really come into your? Yeah, in high school, like our grade was very musically talented. Like mm-hmm. I'm so grateful for having like all the friends that I've like met throughout high school because my grade versus like all the other grades and like my high school experience like we had guitarists we had vocalists we have keyboardists mm-hmm. 
and we kind of just all collabed like during lunchtime our lunch our lunches were like an hour and it was like uh what's it called off campus lunch too oh wow. and so we just chill outside and just jam out like i was a drummer and i couldn't bring my drum set but i would just drink bring my sticks get some notebooks and like they would just make noise dude like i would get like a fat textbook that would be like a hi-hat or something and i get like a notebook yeah. that'd be a snare That's and funny. i just kind of mimic the sounds you know it's super fucking tight and like people were playing guitar people were singing Dude, yeah. it's a great time. Yeah, I was in a in a little band. Nothing crazy. We never yeah. played shows or anything. That's awesome. High school musical shit. Yeah, yeah dude. Honestly, like, yeah. yeah. That's so. that vibe. <laughs> Damn. No, we were in the hallway singing. People would just join in and like people were dancing. Like, yeah, it was definitely that that vibe for sure. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. indie edition. Indie edition. We're all about like alternative yeah. and indie music. You know, a little bit of rock here and there. It was it was a good time, man. Like, uh, our band went through a bunch of name changes like we're mm-hmm. called link uh some other stupid name uh our last name was marshmallow shooting lasers that's for, what, for whatever reason why wow. we just decided we're like whatever we couldn't come up with a name we argued too much mm-hmm. let's just, just fuck it here and you still like talk to those people like you hit them up when you're like having like a show or uh or sometimes follow you, i guess i mean they're 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 in school like at humble they're up oh, in like san marcos gone. yeah they're they're kind of gone i miss them for sure yeah, yeah. definitely should have hit them up more with the summer where they have the time you know i have the time a little bit but uh, i still couldn't find the time for some reason it was just weird but no dude i love those guys to death for sure that's cool yeah so as recently i saw you were kind of featured on this meme page oh. so i don't know if you wanna, can you elaborate a little bit on that how did that come about Ooh. like did you know this person was it just right. like a all right so how it all started uh it's the raisin brand is that the one the, the raisin, raisin brand, brand dude. that's the first one like it's just me it's just snapchat dude snapchat like brings out all of my creativity if you look on my snapchat it's uh if you want to look it up, it's at Techno Titty Kitty, T E K N O. I'll probably put it in yeah. like a little. Maybe right there. I don't know. Look it up. But yeah, my Snapchat stories are just stupid and gnarly, and I just love to make them funny. I, I love getting like compliments. Oh, your Snapchat's hilarious. Mm-hmm. You're the reason why I go on Snapchat. I'm like, really? Like, that's just me that's being awesome. dumb. And like, I like to just look at my Snapchats and just laugh because sometimes I think I'm funny. Yeah. yeah, I feel like Snapchat is definitely like a really unique social media. It's definitely my favorite right now. No, but yeah, it's like sure. such an easy way to because it's you have that uh, like ability to like put something out and then literally you don't have to look at it anymore. Yeah. Twenty four hours. No, yeah. And you can just put it out literally <laughs> anything, and then after you're just like, well, I mean that was something that I did and people reacted to it. Yeah. But and I it's gone in twenty four hours. People will forget about it. Yeah. But then you get a new day to come up with something different, yeah. something new, or maybe something similar, something yeah. familiar to like your audience, mm-hmm. and they they're intrigued. They're uh, what's the word? They 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 really like your content, yeah. especially it's, like for comedy. It's like okay, Vine's dead. Yeah, no, it's R. Vine. R. Yeah. Vine. R. I. P. Vine. R. I. P. That's yeah. Let's that just take a moment of silence. All right. All right. Cool. Thank you, Vine. Thank you, Vine. Thank you. That was dope. Oh, fuck. I was only on Vine for, like, one second. Oh, shit. You ripped it. Straight up? Uh, a little bit. Just because it's all good. Yeah, you yeah. chill. It's all chill. right. Yeah. But, yeah, dude, Vine, Vine is where it was at. Uh, but Snapchat is where it's at. Right. I feel but, like let me get back to my meme thing. thing. I think I just oh, yeah, went, dude, I went yeah. off track with the Snapchat stuff. Oh, no, stuff. go ahead. Yeah, uh, yeah so, like, uh, I just posted on my Snapchat just something really dumb. I was... I took a bite of razor around, I spit it all out, and it was just dumb. And I, it was funny, for it was like a little giggle, like, haha, whatever. And then some guy was like, hey, let me put this on my meme page. This is this guy, actually, uh, he followed me on SoundCloud, and he, he really liked my music. We talked back and forth of, like, doing a collaboration, but I suck balls at collabs, dude. Like, I can never finish one. Like, we'll get, some, like, an idea started, but nothing happens. But he also, like, he's not only a musician or produced music, he, uh, he has a meme page and so he's like dude let me put this on his, on my meme page I'm like yeah sure whatever yeah. I was thinking about something small or uh-huh. whatever and apparently uh, he has like over 20k on like Facebook I'm like whoa what <laughs> and like people are sharing it people were yeah. like tagging their friends and it's like whoa it like kind of opened my eyes in a way like that's all it takes yeah. to like just be a meme and like be kind of funny I guess mm-hmm. 
human means. Yeah, and like I started just sending my stuff to like Instagram meme pages. I feel like that's where the meme, the the main, the meme goal is where yeah. Instagram. That's Instagram, yeah, especially right? especially Instagram right now. I don't know why, dude. It's just I I feel like it's just growing like as a whole entire thing. Yeah, exactly. People are just gravitating towards it. At least like our younger generations. Like I mean. I'm not. I don't really fuck with Facebook. All right. crazy. Exactly. So no, people are like, like kind of getting off Facebook for yeah. sure. Yeah. And that's why Instagram is gonna be like new platform for like comedy for sure. Mm-hmm. And like I use it all the time. I tag my friends. I yeah. send like videos all the time and pictures. Mm-hmm. And it's like they get to it really fast, better than Facebook because people, I guess yeah. nowadays it's just. Not you know really those popping. like cheesy freaking, uh, comedy sketches on. Uh, Instagram, you know, ones I'm talking about that are almost just like ridiculous, like over the top, like, right? Like it's like uh, your girlfriend comes home on you cheating mm, or something, right? And oh, then it's man, like, those oh, are like just... darn it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or like, or dude, like those are the memes I hate, dog. Honestly, dude. it's just like it's funny for a second, but it's just like, dude, come on with some yeah. better stuff. Like it's it's way too, I don't know, mm-hmm. it's overly used. Like that yeah. that that sort of like sim like similar comedy. Like, I, for me, like, I love just, like, random shit. Like, there's no real context to it. Mm-hmm. It's just, like, ooh, picture, ooh, yeah. video of, like, something random as fuck, and, but it's still funny. Yeah. And it, it's, like, an acquired taste, an acquired mm. comedy. It's, like, something, it's, it's definitely, there's a, commu- a community behind it, and they build on that sort of comedy, that sort of acquired. It's just, like, a quick, like, little... Yeah, it's a quick little, they call it shit posting. It's just, like... Dude, yes. Yeah, yeah shit right? Posting, shit sure. posting. I love that shit. It's just, like... It's a quick giggle. It mm-hmm. really makes your day, and it's like, whoa, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. It's hilarious. Like, I love. That's I think for me, that's like gold, for sure. Oh yeah. So now, like, going back to like some of your music stuff, mm-hmm. what do you feel like you're incorporating? Because I feel like EDM has gotten to like this point where you have like the dudes like Getter mm-hmm. that are doing like these really funny like skits like outside of right. his, his, their music but then like when they put stuff in their music like funny stuff in their music like that goes pretty well yeah but um so like I've noticed that like with you you're doing like some pretty funny titles I guess no yeah I definitely Getter is like my one like number one inspiration okay, that's funny yeah. that you mentioned him yeah, yeah he like he all like he has his like different fan bases almost like he had his sub dude mm-hmm. fan base True. and people only saw him as that guy mm-hmm. and then there's the music people who just only saw him as a music and they didn't really know who the sud dude was and the yeah. sud dude didn't know he had music and like it's just so weird and now that Vine is dead I feel like the the, the comedy audience kind of like merged in mm-hmm. to his music audience almost which yeah. gave him a little more popularity which For is sure. like such dude using your social media like entertainment with music is like such a brilliant yeah. idea yeah that just goes like people will join you for either your music or your comedy or your whatever you're trying to uh formulate in your mm-hmm. your social media and it's like it could go either way mm-hmm. and that's what i'm trying to do like get some summer comedy get those people come in and if they check my music and they like it that's like yeah. a plus you know what i mean yeah and if they don't, whatever, they're staying for the comedy. But yeah. still. These people that are, like, checking out your snap and then being, like, oh, oh, man, that's funny, that's funny. And then, like, they'll see, like, oh, a little snippet of something that you're doing. And they're yeah. Like, oh. No, man, yeah. this guy's exactly. serious. Like, yeah. this guy's getting it. Yeah. Like, this guy has good music. And then throw, throw something on your SoundCloud. You'll yeah. See that, and then on your no, screen. yeah, that's, I think that's the fucking formula right now. For sure. It's, like putting something out there like entertainment wise Mm -hmm. like you either like an actor a comedian or something like along those lines and like they see that and then you put yourself like your your artistry like your music or Mm -hmm. some sort of like any 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 art really yeah and you put that up next so like oh he does this too yeah this dude's incredible almost like it's like whoa he's like two different people almost and like that's super sick to a lot of people and that's what i'm trying to build almost I really want to get my comedic side and my more entertaining side yeah. more out there but it's really hard to come up but now that that's happened content. yeah now that that's happened for you like do you see like a growth no yeah for your, sure you've definitely seen a growth yeah so so uh what is like your end goal my like, end goal dude no oh, for sure like music is like number one mm-hmm. but if I have to like put that aside and put like entertainment 
like comedy acting first maybe yeah I would if it like benefits me and my music like earlier in the future mm-hmm. I think I would definitely do that yeah going in that lane and then being like like I said like coming up and being like oh yeah I make this yeah exactly I make this music yeah, I make music I, I, you know love. whatever yeah. <laughs> I DJ you know I fucking check out my song club yeah yeah exactly I no. always feel so awkward doing that really it's like something that I do that I definitely have like a phobia of, mm-hmm. of just being like hey like Check me out on SoundCloud. Right, no, I just, I, I just throw it out there. Like, if you even look at my Snapchat right now, like, I have some, like, just shit. Like, I post some funny shit, and then right off the bat, oh, I'm playing this show. Mm-hmm. And then right after that, I post something funny music-wise, too. Yeah. Like, I'm over here. This is literally what happened. I'm just on decks. My pants are down. I have my underwear. I'm just, like, you know. Yeah. Pelvic thrust, pelvic thrust. You know, my wings dangling, and, like, in my boxer shorts. And I'm just having music in the background. and just like, oh, shit. <laughs> he DJs and he just like chills and he's funny as fuck. Like, what do you feel like your predominant like fan base is on Snapchat? Ooh, fuck, for sure the the more comedic side. Like, the music is there, but I definitely see more people. Oh, you're funny as fuck. Mm-hmm. Like they definitely and like like randomly, it's so weird. Like I got, you know how you can get added to a bunch of like group stories yeah. and shit. Dude, yeah. that's on the rise. Mm-hmm. Like you need to take that for advantage for sure. Mm-hmm. And, like, I'm, like, getting at it just because, like, I just post weird, funny shit on yeah. those. And they're, like, oh, I think you're funny. I'm, you're gonna, I'm gonna put you on my story. And some of these stories have, like, 3,000 views. Mm-hmm. And you get all these people at it. And, it, like, for me, it's, like, I just get a bunch of kids, you know, people, like, who are, like, 15, 16, whatever. But yeah, I mean, a fan base a is fan, a fan base. Especially yeah. the younger that you get to them, then you, I mean... Yeah, the they're gonna they grow, and they're gonna grow with you. Exactly. Yeah. Especially if you're starting out right now, these mm-hmm. people are just like, oh, man, I all and down. Have you heard of the wet carriage? Yeah, like, exactly. And then they'll send your story. No, to somebody. it's insane. Yeah. Like they tell their friends about me, and it's like so fucking mind blowing to me. It's and like EDM is on the rise, no a- doubt. Oh. It's like in some, like it's just bubbling up. Just ready dude, honestly, just... like it's 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 at that plateau, which is like it's so good, but it's at the same time, it's like oh. It's like only some people yeah. are like into it. I feel like it's more of like it's it's getting to the phase of like I don't want to say like a hipster kind of thing, right. but it's like yeah, these, almost. There's there is a almost, group of people, yeah. like a hipster crew, a crew that are just like, oh, you like this? Oh, you like the white carrot? Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or like oh, dude, I kind of want to be at that point where like oh, you listen to the white carrot? That's so mainstream, dude. Yeah. Like I want people to say that. Mm-hmm. Like that's like a dream to be honest. Yeah. Like that's so crazy just to like. Have someone say those words like just really. end up being like a joke, like yeah, almost like, like just, dude. Know, honestly, like, like that's what I want to do. Excision and down, yeah. uh, like on that vibe, like been around for minutes oh, and just coming up. Oh man, I can't, I can't compare my myself to those guys. Those are legends. But I yeah, no, them, no, like, it's like, but at least when. for me, I'm not like a super. In, I'm not super into, uh, yeah, or like I'm not like into. I'm into it, but it's right. just like, I don't listen to it all right, the time. Right. But then what I what my uh, what I've just known from it is. Skrillex. Right. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. And now, if I'm thinking about Skrillex, I'm not thinking about his music, I'm thinking about his haircut. Right, or yeah, like, yeah, yeah. As a person, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel you. No, that's definitely... It's on the rise, part of it. Sure. No, yeah, I'm super excited where... I think right now, you need to get up there quick, because mm-hmm. it's, it's getting to a point where it's like, you're being way too... Sat- it really is saturated as shit. And it's like so difficult. You have to like be the one who like be who's unique mm-hmm. and like who uh, yeah. who's kind of like different from like the rest of like everyone and, like everyone and their mom are like making music nowadays like electronic music yeah and it's so easy it's easy it's so easy it's nowadays. easy yeah but yeah like you said it's just like that unique side of you that needs to come out yeah and put it through your music exactly so you're uh you're doing stuff at the basement so mm-hmm. how did that kind of come about? The basement in San Diego, downtown, gas lamp. Yeah, I'll talk De- about it. Definitely very uh, populated area. Yeah, no, yeah, I love playing out that place. It's so much fun. But I got in contact with that club with this guy named uh, Tommy Maverick. I used to play in the club with him. It was like the 16-plus club. <laughs> it was called Summer Loud. It was kind of like by, uh, what's it called, uh, by Old Town. Right across like Washington Street, I forget what street. It's on Noel Street, Noel, Noel Street, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was it was the spot for ravers, yeah, for club people. It well, was, yeah, okay. Let's start. Let's start there. And just being like, what what was your first kind of gig? My first gig. Oh man, I think I was sixteen. Um, 
I first started with like, a trio because I was scared to do it by myself to be honest I was just like whoa what the hell like this club like I barely I think I was 15 almost like I was barely turning 16 it was like barely that age where I was like allowed to even be in there mm-hmm. and um, yeah I was like I asked my friends they were into the music too I I had this like super basic uh, Newmark Mix Track Pro and that's where I like tried my ass off like just like playing and playing and um, yeah, I was with this trio called the Pineapple Society, and that's like where it all kind of like began. Like just me and two friends, just like vibing on music on EDM. We were super into Mubaton, if you know what that is. It's kind of like reggaeton, but with like EDM side to it. Yeah, that's like, nice. Like it started with like Dylan Francis. Yeah, that guy. Munchie, uh, Natastrom, like those those were like the Mubaton kings to me, mm-hmm. and like listening to that I was like, oh fuck. It was like it's it's just it was just so vibey and so groovy and like, but super party, mm-hmm. and that's what I fucking loved about it. <coughs> I don't remember my first gig. I wish I did. It was probably super shitty to be honest. Like we were always like, the underdogs. They were like the openers of the club. No one would really be inside the club. Mm-hmm. And but we would rage, dude. Like me and my buddies, we go hard. Yeah. And like. Of course, you gotta you gotta put on show for the people so. no yeah and it was just kind of hard because like it would only get packed for like at a certain time mm-hmm. and like would it just get the people like just the people who like sprinkle in a little bit and just people who came in for their friends you know yeah. like the DJ's friends and it wasn't even that many people and uh, what's it called yeah I feel like for us we're getting on that rise to like being like a headliner almost at that club but they shut down right we were like being like kind of like pretty dope and I feel like we came up with uh, bringing out uh, twerking music almost. Do you know? So it's like EDM twerking music. So it's like, what's this, like turn down for what? Yeah. That's it's that's like EDM. Technology. Yeah. And I feel like uh, we brought that up and gave them a new sound. Mm. And we were like the first people to like try that out, and people they grabbed that attention like, oh shit, what is this like? And I feel like we're, like, the pioneers almost to, like, bringing that sort of music out to that club. And people started playing it. Everybody started playing it. And we were, like, we started that shit. No one ever gave us, like, recognition for what we did. But it is what it is, you know? Yeah. To me, it's, like, oh, I felt like I did pretty good. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I don't need people to tell me, oh, you did this and that. Like, whatever. But to me, if I tell myself, like, oh, you did this, you did a good job, like, that's what I need. Yeah. And it's it's pretty it's pretty cool to know that one person can make a change and like one one group can make a change and it's really dope that's what it's about right yeah Just giving that impact on somebody yeah exactly so that was so pretty yeah no, that's cool oh um, yeah uh, what, what was it going what's, what's next point? what's after that <laughs> yeah what was the point what of that what happened after what happened like yeah so, so you got you that whole club closed right yeah apparently uh, they were being too loud Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, old isn't town. That... <laughs> Damn it. Fucking old town. No, it was honestly that, like, they would get so many... Not a lot, honestly. The cops would never really show up. They showed maybe, like, one time or twice because there was a fight going on or something, but that spot was, like, a really good spot. It was not a... It was, like, the area was kind of bad, mm-hmm. but the people there, they, they knew their rave etiquette, if that makes sense. Like, they knew how to party, like, yeah. well, like, they wouldn't get too fucked up. There's never people on the ground, like, fucking rolling balls, like, they need, like, water or, like, medical attention. Like, we knew our shit almost, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm sure every other people are getting fucked up, whatever, but, like, they knew their limit, like, they knew their responsibilities. They took their responsibilities first, and that that's what I felt like that club mm-hmm. was, like, super good about. I feel like it's, like, one person to fuck it up. Yeah, exactly. No. And that was definitely, I'm sure that was the case of just mm-hmm. some person that was just being whack. Yeah, exactly. Ruining it for everybody. No, yeah, it's it's super dumb. And, like, at one point where we were, like, uh, this, is, this is so funny, like, me and my buddies for Pineapple Society, we uh, created kind of, like, events by ourselves, creating, like, high school events. Oh, yeah. Because we were high school based. But it was kind of shitty because... I was with the in the high school with one of the guys, and our, our high school small as fuck. It's six hundred kids. No one liked the music at all. I felt like the black sheep of the high school almost, like music wise. No one mm-hmm. liked it at all. And then my other friend, he went to a small ass high school too. He went to like this ca- Catholic private school. All guys, like five hundred kids, six hundred kids too. Mm-hmm. So it was really kind of hard to get his audience in too. And we would our our shows would be like less than like fifty people. 
Oh, yeah. But, like, our biggest show was for sure when we got uh, uh, the head uh, the head of Blood on the Dance Floor. <laughs> yeah, the guy Davi, the main guy. Yeah. We got him to headline one of our shows. Damn. That was fucking funny as fuck. Where were these based at? Like, <coughs> were they at people's houses, or you would, like, find a place to go? Right. No, he actually just started coming to Summer Lab, like, himself. Like, the oh. Main, he oh, would just... you would do them at the club? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like... We got help from the owner for sure, the Brian, the owner of Summer Loud. He helped us uh, get that guy on like our show, basically. That was so fucking cool. He's he's actually a really cool guy. Shout out Brian. Shout out to Brian, dude. and shout out to fucking Dobby from Blood and Dance for them. Yeah, fucking Dobby. <laughs> he's a he's a weirdo, but he's cool as fuck. Yeah, I, I hello vibe with him. I wonder what he's doing because he he's actually kind of like San Diego based. I don't yeah. want to give out his area, but yeah, he. He's around here, yeah. which which I didn't know. <laughs> Hit him up. Yeah, HMU him, dude. Hit him up. <laughs> so you went from there, from, you went from that club. Did you go to any other club, or did you go? Yeah, so it was act, actually like this like huge pause for me, almost like mm-hmm. going to clubs, and I was just kind of just like trying to work on music, but for some reason I couldn't get it together. I'm trying to think like like what happened between Summer Loud and Basement. I think it was kind of quick, mm-hmm. like, the, the the club became, like, 18 plus, like, right away, because it used to be 21 and up only, mm-hmm. and that place came 18 plus, and I feel like because Summer Lab shut down, Yeah. and, like, all the... How all old the, are you when that happened, when Summer Lab shut down? Uh, I think I was just barely 18, still. You are still in high school? I was still, I think... Are you just graduated? Dude, I'm sorry, I'm trying to remember, I think, right around the end of high school, beginning of college... Freshman year for sure, and that's when I shut down. No, yeah, for sure, yeah, like around that time, like okay. three years ago, four years ago, no, like three years ago, like three years ago for sure. And um, yeah, I just picked up basement like a year after, and I'm still on there. Super dope. So what are you doing for the basement? Because I see that you do like promotional stuff on your. Yeah, I'm always posting on Facebook like shows. Uh, of course, I'm promoting my own show, which mm-hmm. is, like, I promote heavy for it because I'm trying to, like, get people to come to my show, make it, like, legit as hell. And I'm also, like, a street promoter. Like, I go out, you know, I'm those guys with, like, the flyers and stuff. I get people in. I, t- I talk about the club, you know. It's fun. Like, I, I love it. Like, mm-hmm. I love my coworkers. I love the, I love the basement crew. It's super dope. So, I'm su- so being involved with that kind of helped me yeah. stay DJing with, like, basement and mm-hmm. stuff. And they see... I'm like involved with the community. I'm, I'm involved with basement. They see me on social media talking about it. Mm-hmm. So, how is the San Diego scene for like EDM? Oh man, it's it's weird. Mm-hmm. It's like it's hard to explain because it's so uh, what's the word? It's super strict. Like if basement, like it's a club. It's not really like ravey vibes. Like you have to be kind of like just where kind of clean cut clothes in a way it's still casual but it's just like people aren't wearing yeah like, the it, masks and exactly the yeah candy exactly and, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and it's just like it's more club than rave than anything else okay but if you get like the right crowd in it feels like a rave mm-hmm. but most of the time it definitely feels like a club like people are there just to like get drunk yeah. and like dance or, like whatever and that's okay like I have nothing against that but I just I wish the San, San Diego scene had more uh, more shows where like there's like ravey feel but there is there is you just have to find them like I'm starting to play like uh, the 20, 21 and up shows for uh, at the AC lounge the air conditioned lounge and um, um, I'm with a centerpiece now like they're they're booking me I've, I've been booked with them twice super nice guys and um yeah, they, they they throw some super hard ass dubs of shows and that's so fucking cool. And like their first show, I was super like drunk as fuck. But like I loved it. I mm-hmm. loved it. And so I started talking with the guys. I was like, Hey, I wanna I wanna play and they're like, Yeah, sure, let's see what you got. They invited me to open decks, which is like have like DJs come through Damn. and just play for like thirty minutes. Mm-hmm. And like, Hey, we like what you got and they got me booked. Uh, for a show I played like a few weeks ago and it was so sick dude I loved it it was so fun and um, I, I'm, ge- I'm getting booked for this next show in October 4th 
uh, it's gonna be like another dubs of show and I'm super stoked for that hell yeah and on the 6th like literally that week I'm playing mm-hmm. basement damn so it's like all the 21 and up kids are like bass heads who mm-hmm. just wanna just go check me out even first timers like come through it's free 21 and up and it's gonna be a sick ass show like okay. I, the, the headliner is Zaber he's like this big uh the, I forget what label he's on. I think he's on Disciple, or Black Label. I forget. I don't know, but he's he's really talented, dude. He's San Diego based. Oh, nice. Which is really cool. And um, I'm playing uh, the show on Friday, like uh, two days after, at Basement with uh, Bro Safari. Yeah, that, that sounds cool. Yeah, he's this like huge trap, almost dubstep. He was really into Mumaton back in the day when I was into Mumaton, so that was so cool. Like, I pre- basically like grew up kind of listening. Like, I'm saying growing up, as in like when I started listening to EDM, like mm-hmm. back in the day. Like, I started listening to Dubstep and Mumaton. Those two are like the biggest ones. Yeah. And Bro Safari was like one of the first people I like listened to, and being able to play for him is like such an honor. Dude. Yeah. It's crazy cool. being on the same lineup, dude. It's insane. Like. That's why I felt the same way with Zomboy when I was on that, on his lineup. Oh, yeah. That shit was gnarly. It's so sick to be your name under his name, almost, mm-hmm. you know. On the come up. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> I don't know. The concept of blood is crazy to me. Do you know a lot of chicks off Snapchat? <laughs> That's just like over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh... <laughs> That's such a fun... That's, That's a fun question, dude. It's so weird because, like... All the chicks that hit me up were like underage, and it's so fucking weird. And it's like I can't fuck with it, cause yeah. all the all all the all the stories I'm on, they're like all these like high schoolers. Sure, yeah. you get one or two like eighteen year olds, like okay, that's true. Like, I, I, yeah, I'm behind it. But then all of them are like sixteen. It's like whoa. Yeah. <laughs> I have to like hella step back. You don't want to catch case. No, yeah, they're all calling me daddy. I'm like. Whoa. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what the, hell? what the fuck's happening, dude? Oh. Like, it's insane. It's... Kids are fucking crazy. Well, it's the, yeah. like they're the next generation coming up. Right? They're they're a bunch of weirdos. Sketch. But it's, it's it's sketchy, yeah. But it's, I think it's cool as fuck. Like, call me co- daddy, <laughs> child. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, dude, it's so funny because like uh, at Starbucks, my name tag is daddy. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> and, like, people's like, is your name really Daddy? I'm like, yeah, my name's Daddy. And they're like, all right, Daddy. And so it's the coolest shit, especially That's when nice. they're, like, this hot-ass chick. I, I feel yeah. so cool. <laughs> like, I feel, like, fucking amazing about it. And it's so funny, like, sometimes, it's, it's so weird to say, but, like, like these, like, toddlers are like, hi, Daddy. I'm like, what? <laughs> it's the weirdest shit. It's the weirdest shit, but it's Comes hilarious. with the territory, bro. No, yeah, it's, it's so funny. Comes with the name tag. <laughs> yeah. And people ask about it all the time. Like, hey, your name's really Daddy. It's like, do people call you Daddy? I'm like, yeah. They're like, they're okay, Daddy. And it's like, whoa. Oh, fuck. Dude. It's like, I'm not being... It's, I think because it's okay. It's okay to leave that there because I'm just being funny. Like, yeah. It's nothing serious. Like, you can tell... Like, that's the main reason why I grew the mustache. Like, this is still kind of new. Mm-hmm. And people compliment me on my mustache all the time. Yeah. And that's why I kind of keep it. It makes me feel good. Mm-hmm. in a way and I didn't have that intention when I grew it I was just like yeah. at a time in my life I was like you know what I don't give a fuck anymore I'm just gonna grow a fucking yeah mustache. when did that happen dude honestly uh, last year August I had like a shoot one year anniversary last month <laughs> like last month damn and I, you have it well you trim it and shit like, y- yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so it's like the exactly I have to maintain it what do you use on the, the curls is it just straight twisting or is it uh, use something on it yeah so for a minute I was using this uh, like hair gel it's kind of like glue style hair gel it's like all white kind of looks like a, what's that glue with the with the fucking the cow oh, Elmer's, okay. Elmer's yeah. yeah it was kind of like Elmer's glue almost but it was like hair gel it was weird and that's what I used for a second but like after an hour it was like drooped down it didn't work for me so I like looked for another alternative and I went on Amazon looked up mustache wax <laughs> ordered the first thing and yeah. I used it, and it is what it is, and I'm still using it. It's pretty legit. And I'm still using the same little capsule. It's, like, that small. But, like, it's so fucking weird. I was so confused when I got it because mm-hmm. it's, like, super hard. It's wax. It's almost, like, think of it as, like, a soft candle wax. Okay. But that's still kind of hard. You have to, like, scrape it almost. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and, like, you have to scrape it, kind of, like, smear it, like, really hard on your fingers. 
and then like go around your mustache and like kind of curl it dude my mustache takes like way longer than doing my hair for sure like my hair is just like one minute okay done yeah. my mustache is like precision it's like alright gotta hold it there just so I can just like stay at that position is like so difficult sometimes and like I'm late to events because like I'm working on my fucking mustache yeah, and it's, it's hilarious and it's like the concept of me being like was a my mustache it's so funny but like I love this thing dude I it's a nice yeah, touch yeah it's funny I love it's it cool. I did it for the humor for the fuck of it and it gets a lot of attention which I didn't fucking you know in, intend to happen mm-hmm. but it's happening you know it's literally the best move I've ever done in my life not gonna lie like it's literally the best move ever it just it's like a <laughs> like those pe- like things like uh, like peacocking right it's kind of like that kind of vibe it's a, who has yeah exactly who has a mustache like that who has curly mustache I know mustaches? like like it was just funny because like I was like oh it's just a mustache but when I hear other people talk about it it's like yeah I've never seen anyone curl it and that's the thing the curl like there's so many people with mustaches like it's whatever Mm-hmm. Then that kind of say, oh, cool mustache, just because you have a mustache. But with the curl, it's like something different. But I didn't realize it until it started being a thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It just happened, and I'm so glad that it just happened. And I feel like that would definitely help me, like career wise, almost. You know, like, organic it's, it's, vibes. It's like it's an attention getter, and mm-hmm. that's like exactly what I need. Hell yeah. Yeah. So what about now? What is some of the music that you're listening to now, aside from some EDM stuff? Damn, dude, that's that's a hard question. Oh well, not really. Yeah, I yeah. I'm always listening to jazz, dude. I I pop on the, the jazz station, the San Diego City College station. They always just bust oh, out some yeah. jazz, some salsa. Uh, I just like listening to that shit. I always see it kind of like, I always compare it to like dubstep. Like a lot of it sounds the same. Like mm. so much of that shit sounds the same, but. Like as a musician and as a like a music produ- production guy, it, you you can kind of see that it's like different. Like mm-hmm. your ears, like because you're so uh, what's it called? You're training your ears almost listening to the music constantly. You can like tell the yeah. difference between like what and what. And when you listen to jazz, it's like oh, it's gonna be piano, like something like swing, guitar, sure. there's some swing to it. They're like oh, it just sounds kind of all the same, but mm-hmm. it's not. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, it's so crazy. Like, they definitely go hand in hand in a way. But that's just how music is in general. Yeah. You know? Everything is just. Yeah. Everything takes a little bit of something else exactly. and then putting it into it. And, right. Yeah. No, yeah, I definitely want to broaden my horizon really with music too. Because, like, EDM is what I mostly listen to. I listen to a bunch of, like, chill, like, vapor wave some yeah. like funky lo-fi type yeah lo-fi beats yeah dude, dude yeah, if you start making that. some of that stuff that would be nuts no yeah I want to I really want to get into that throwing samples in there of just like random shit oh yeah dude, that'd be so sick I, for sure in the future I feel like that would definitely happen I definitely want to broaden my musical creativity and like put it out publicly for sure mm-hmm. so we'll see yeah, who knows yeah so I'm pretty excited so about right now I'm gonna keep it to just like banging yourself at the moment <laughs> bang it out real quick kinda you know keep what I mean? banging yeah exactly damn what about food what kind of food do you eat what's your favorite type of type of thing to munch dude, on dude honestly it's so weird I'm not a, that much of a foodie yeah yeah I just like I eat whatever like I'm the most non picky eater in the fucking world. I can eat, I can drink anything. Like if you give me a plate, like yeah, it's gonna. I'm gonna eat it, and it's so fucking weird. I, like I feel so boring, like talking about how mm. I'm just like whatever about food. I, well, if you were stuck on an island <laughs> okay. with nothing but something to drink, something to eat, and then let's say like a person that you can <laughs> hang out with, right? Okay. Like what would those three things be? So, something to eat, a person, and what else? Something to drink. Something to drink. <sighs> Definitely caught myself a, a Four Loco Gold <laughs> for a drink. Hit me up, Four Loco, for that sponsorship. sponsorship. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you got, too, out here. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Four Locos are fucking legit. Like, I barely started getting into them, and it's funny. Like, yeah. Everyone's like, oh, I remember those in high school. But when I was in high school, I was straight edge of shit. For sure. I didn't do anything. Like, I was hanging out with my homies, we were just chilling, that's it. Made music. That's that. And every other person in high school were, like, partying, doing drugs, drinking, and I'm over here 
barely starting my high school career. <laughs> Almost, you know what I mean? It's crazy. Doing it. But it's so funny. I think once I started picking it up, other people started picking it up almost. Like, people... It's just funny. It's like, a wave, dude. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh... But, yeah, the the question, right? Yeah, the four loco for well, a drink. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> That's... A, it's, like, a funny thing, man. <laughs> it is funny. It's what like, do you like the most about it? The... Just the can. Like, it's so... Is, a, it's you, a four loco, yeah. dude. Like, it's so... It's, like... It has that, uh... That rep of like being mm. the high school drink, being the the drink no one wants, you yeah. know. It's like the, the the bottom of the fucking barrel. Almost. It's like almost poison. <laughs> yeah, like... yeah, exactly. Dude, this one's fourteen percent. And is there a silver one? <laughs> Good question. That's the gold one. I'm not sure. What's your favorite flavor, like aside from that one? The gold one. Yeah. Do you have you had any other ones? Uh, the fruit punch is really good. I fuck with the fruit punch. I actually have a. A shirt. I just got... <laughs> since I got this new obsession with Four Loco, I bought a shirt mm-hmm. with a, a Four Loco can on it with a fire flame. Damn. It's super legit. <laughs> yeah. It's super That's fucking crazy. amazing. Yeah, I love it. But, uh... Fuck, I always... I keep getting off track with your shit. I'm sorry. Oh, no, dude. <laughs> I'm down from the convos. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, what about food? Food. <sighs> Literally... Is it a dish one. or, like, just an... I hear... How... Uh... You pick, I don't know. You want me to say it? All right. Pizza. Okay, yeah. A pizza? A whole ass pizza? <laughs> That's like a, whole, a whole ass... Uh, it has to be meat lover's pizza. Meat lover's pizza? What's on it, though? Sausage, pepperoni, maybe carne asada. <laughs> Some french fries, maybe? That'd be nuts. Oh, my God. <laughs> Nacho cheese. <laughs> wow. Dude, with, like, in a tortilla. <laughs> Damn, so... <laughs> oh, no, dude. Some, some fat ass shit real quick. Damn. I mean, you're an island. I wouldn't know how to survive on an island. I, I would say the best way to go is being like obese and just to be obese. Kill yourself off four locos. Be obese. <laughs> yeah. Four locos. And pizza, tor- pizza and burritos. Bur- pizza burritos. <laughs> uh, and uh, okay, so who are you gonna do that with? Who are you gonna munch? Uh, some, who are you gonna drink four it's locos? It's gotta be a girl, dude. It's gotta be like yeah, someone who I'm a homie with, like. Oh man. You're I, a homie with, but you'd cop. Yeah, exactly. I feel like, <laughs> like that. They have to be chill, and I'm supposed to be chill then. You know, that's the that's all the chemistry. Yeah. What about something that you never met before? Ooh, I think that would make it a little, a little interesting too. Yeah. But they could be kind of like really fucking boring too, so it would be it would kind of suck. I feel that. But. You're the only two people on the island, I feel like, in some way. Thank you. Did you want some dip? I'm down. In some way, you would have to connect. Like, yeah. What about like mandatory a in a way. What? What was that? Like a famous person. Oh. <coughs> mm. Of course. Mm. Famous person. I don't know, dude. Like, it's so weird. I'm not super into, like, pop culture almost Mm. and it's so weird for me to like point out like actors and like popular artists and because like i'm always just like i'm in my own cave almost what about a hot chick (laughs) a literal hot chick (laughs) with anybody that's hot that you like see hmm are you asking like someone specifically or just saying like just a hot chick you can say it say somebody's name say say a first name (laughs) lisa that's my uh, art or my acting teacher right now. <laughs> <That's Hell yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa, what's your last name? Oh shit, um, I forget. Did it move? Uh, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. No, but um, I, I don't know. I just call her Lisa. <laughs> She's my acting teacher for this semester. She's chill. Damn. Kind of on the older older side, but I dig it. She cops. She fucking she cops. cops looks. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. what I'm talking about. No, she's super chill. And super intimidating. Yeah. But uh, I kind of like that. It's Have you ever eaten ass? <sighs> Good question. I don't know, dude. It's so weird because, like, I was hanging out with this chick. <coughs> and she's from, uh, she's from Maine. Mm. <laughs> she's and from I, Maine, but she lives here? Yeah. Or she's from Maine? Oh, she, she was living here for a second. I think she's back in Maine now. Oh, shout out to the Maine. Shout out to the, for the fucking Maine, dude. And I got so fucking, like, 
drunk off my ball sack, dude. Like, it's insane. Like, I have, like, blurry-ass visions. Like, it's just, like, all, like, what's it called? Like, just, like, little yeah, picture. Little like, clips. Little clips, little clips, exactly. And I felt like I was eating grass, dude. I don't know. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, I just felt I just felt I just, kinda, I just knew it I just I had the vibe that I fucking did there was some cheek eating <laughs> yeah. some cheek licks dude exactly down. yeah damn <laughs> damn yeah so I'm not sure I want to yeah like, I'm super open to it like it's like it just it's just skin but unfortunately the poop comes out of it sometimes. Just sometimes but you can always just uh, like bro girls don't do that right right, right. <laughs> that's like that's the worst right. thing yeah be feminist guys <laughs> be feminist be equal girls poop bro girls poop they fart they fucking burp they vomit have you ever had your ass licked no I haven't I'm yeah. curious though no, I'm, I'm super down for it yeah just never found someone who's actually down to like open my hairy ass and go for it and go to down in. <laughs> just, go, just going at it, just fucking like sorting my fucking bottle, you know. With their tongue or yeah. with their fingers? Their tongue. It's supposed to be. This supposed to be the tongue action, but I feel that. I could. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Damn. Hell yeah, dude. No, oh, yeah. I will definitely will love to uh, eat ass in the future. And sure. uh, soon, dude. Hit me up. Hit him up. Hit me up. For ass eating both ways. Um, I'm done with that. So. <laughs> like, uh, I don't think there's any other way to end it. I feel like there's not. <laughs> well, hey. This was Brian. This was Nico. And, and this is. The Discourse Podcast. The Discourse Podcast. Hit us up. Tune in next week. Or not. Probably not. It's not going to happen. <laughs>